We are in Lad Mix Farm today and actually this place is in Nuoya. This is a pineapple garden. It's about 10 acres. If you're actually someone interested in pineapple farming, this video is for you. My name is Layo Charles and I'm bringing to you the farming stories of Uganda. This is the Ugandan farmer. Today I'm right here with Mr. Arthur, a pineapple farmer. Also, he's doing chili, goat farming, uh, poultry, all those. If you are interested in it, keep on watching because you are going to learn a lot. In today's video, we will be talking about pineapple. Growing up in northern Uganda, I used to know that pineapple only comes from central Uganda, from Luero, mm. but it's actually changing the story. Yes. of northern uganda so let's welcome arthur to the channel he'll introduce himself and then we we keep on you know telling you about his story you're most welcome uh, thank you charles i'm called arthur arthur Nkubito. i'm a farmer a uh, full-time farmer actually oh full-time at, uh, at lad mix farm in moya we are found in uh, uh, bajere parish and so you can be able to reach us out and be able to interact with us more yeah thank you Wow, it's amazing to see what you're doing. So right here where we are standing is a pineapple garden. Yes. Uh, I don't know if garden is the right word to use. Yes. How many acres is this? Um, we have two sections. It's one big section. Actually, it's over 10 acres. Oh. Uh, but we have uh, around six acres that have started uh, flowering and fruiting. Yeah. And the other ones, I think they will start... Uh, as we begin uh, the uh, next year mm. uh, because we planted them in phases yeah yes please now let's get to know about your journey i believe you did not start this uh like this year because mm. you can see mm. what we mm. are holding right here yes take, take us through your journey how how is how did you start everything and what exactly inspired you or why did you start this pineapple farming right here okay. in northern uganda mm. thank you so much um, after acquiring some uh, land here, mm. I noticed that uh, the climate here was more or less like any other parts yeah. of Uganda that I've been traveling in. And I was always fascinated about the pineapple crop. So um, looking at the weather, where the pineapples was growing and looking at how they were performing, I just felt it could perform very well here. Mm. So I needed to take uh, that bold step. However, in order to do that, I also needed to get the right type of pineapple to bring, you yeah, see. Yeah. So I reached out because in my former employment, before I turned into a full-time farmer, uh, I was supporting some projects uh, within uh, beyond Masaka area, oh, okay. in Kalisizo area. And so I was supporting some of the farmers that were doing pineapple farming, coffee farming, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I knew, uh, looked at the pineapple, the quality, the taste, and so forth. So I knew that that was the quality I'd wanted to bring here. Mm. So I took the trouble to bring it all the way from Kalisizo, past Kampala, and bring it all the way to uh, to Nwaya. Yeah. And I was trying to look at a crop uh, which you can grow in a smaller area but give you high income. But also a crop which can give you um, income over multiple years. Yes, uh, yes. Because as you may know, or as you may discover today, a pineapple takes one and a half years uh, to grow. Oh, okay. Yes. And it would be ready. Yes, it will be ready. Okay. Uh, it takes one and a half years. It starts flowering from the 15th month. Mm -hmm. And from the 15th to the 18th month, uh, that's when it takes actually three months uh, from flowering to fruiting to say, yes. uh, you know, a fruit of this nature. Yeah. So I needed a crop that I could be able to get income from over a certain period of time. Yeah. Um, because at the same time, I was doing some crop farming here. I think I started with some 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 sunflowers as well, yeah. plus maize, uh, soybean. Mm -hmm. But I could get challenges of uh, climate change, uh, yeah. prolonged rains yes. when you don't expect them, exactly. prolonged uh, sunshine even during the rainy season. Yes, yes. And there's a way it would disorganize entirely the what, um, uh, the cycle of the of the of the soil, for instance. Yeah. So I needed the crop that whether it rains so much, whether it shines so much, yeah. the crop will keep on moving forward. Uh, and yeah. so I zeroed down on the pineapple. Yeah. Now the reason why I waited up to this point, 
uh, be being a new crop in the region, people needed to see how it is growing, uh, the vegetative nature of it in the garden, how healthy it will look like, mm. but also the fruit. Look at the size of the fruit yeah. and taste. Yeah. So after picking and tasting and sampling it out to the market, that's when I decided to say, okay, let's have people look at it. Mm. Let's interest people to grow this crop. Yeah. It is a very sweet pineapple. You'll attest to it once you you taste it. Yeah. <laughs> and the volume, when you look at the size, is yeah. very good. Yeah. It so is. you can imagine, you can imagine having a crop like this uh -huh. and uh, helping people not to go all the way from to the central to be able to buy a fruit like this to mm. go to eat. We can be able to grow this crop here, and people can be able to add value to it if they want to do juice. Yes. Yes. But also, uh, the traders that move all the way from South Sudan to the central, uh -huh. this time they'll just stop in the northern part of the country exactly. and be able to take it. The only challenge with such traders, when they come to a garden, they want to come and find volumes. So that when oh, he brings okay. his truck, he wants to be able to fill a truck mm. in, in a particular you know, village. Yeah. So even if you are to do one acre or two, your neighbor does one acre or two and the other one does yes, maybe three. Yes. He knows that once he comes there uh -huh. and you have agreed on the price, he will just park in one place and you fill a whole truck. Yeah. And that is the only secret when it comes to these uh, bigger markets. Yeah. Yes, and I, I think you know I was interacting with a certain farmer a few days ago. I think that's actually one of the best way to grow as a farmer. Mm. If you don't have a, a very huge resources, you can a certain farm would do this, another one would do this. So when the buyer comes, mm. he collects from all of you. Exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, I got someone mm. uh, asked me on my channel recently mm. that can pineapple grow in northern uganda mm. at first i didn't know how to answer this question because i, I had not <laughs> met you yes but i since you're here mm. <laughs> i think you're the right person to answer that question yes can pineapple grow in northern uganda mm. thank you so much as <laughs> as you can attest to this pineapples are doing very well yeah. in northern uganda and can actually do very well provided you have uh, loamy soils even if they are sandy soils yeah you have just to avoid the swampy area because uh, pineapples don't need waterlogged you oh, know, area, soils yes. because then the root system will just end up rotting. Oh, they okay. need a significant amount of rain yeah. when it is time to rain, yeah. but you don't have to plant them in a swampy area like eucalyptus. Oh, For yeah. that eucalyptus type that needs a swampy area, yeah. it will just not thrive well. Mm. So here, the, as you can see, the soils are very rich generally in the northern subregion. So there is Unless I've not seen any area in the northern subregion where which cannot accommodate a pineapple mm, grow. Almost every area. Yes, apart from a swamp. Yeah. You see, yes. which is a, more or less the same even if you went to an, another part of the country. Mm -hmm. And just to interest people is that uh, these ones are planted, of course, using um, suckers. Oh yeah. Now just to alert them that in an acre you can actually plant fifteen thousand suckers. Okay. Now fifteen thousand suckers you use it when you're using a spacing of. Uh, um, uh, 1.5 feet from one sucker to the other within a particular line, oh, okay. but from one line to the other, you just give it a spacing of two feet. Oh. So when you use that to spacing, you'll be able to plant 15,000 suckers in a particular acre. Wow. Now, why we do it that way? Uh -huh. Because of the nature of the soils, you want to make sure that you give the pineapples enough space. Remember, as I told you, once you harvest the first fruit, mm. uh, pineapples don't just die out there and then. Yeah. It will be able to grow other suckers that come oh, from the ground. Oh, oh, so if you harvest one like this, yes. more will still come from that. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> so, depending on how the soil is fertile, you yeah. can either leave, it will give you up to three suckers. So oh. you can either thin and say want only one or two. Yes. But if you find that the soil is good and is adequate enough to handle the three, yeah. leave all the three to grow well. Yeah. And that's why we give it a spacing of 1.5 feet from one to the other mm. and two feet. Yeah. In areas where the soil is so exhausted and you know that whatever you do is not going to give you a very big fruit, mm. that's when you use one foot for one foot by one foot to ah. plant. There you have a lot of volumes, but it will be off some size mm, you see yeah. but where you're sure that the soils are very good please give it a spacing of 1.5 feet from within one line and then from one line to the other uh two feet oh, then it will okay. be able to give you the size that you really want mm. now as i told you as long as when you're weeding just make sure you keep on putting soils along uh, the pineapple lines yeah and so it will grow when it is having a lot of you know root penetration 
uh, that will give it a good anchoring mm -hmm. and can give you a very good fruit. You see? And then there, you'll be able to see that other, once you remove this pineapple in a short while, the other suckers will start emerging that will give you the second fruit. Mm -hmm. If you look after the garden very well, by adding uh, either cow dung, goat dung, rabbit dung, and cow urine, and mm -hmm. so forth, yeah. you'll harvest up to four times. Oh, but normally, we normally yeah. tell people that expect harvest up to three rounds. Yeah. So this is going to be the first round of harvesting. Uh -huh. Now, that takes one and a half years. But the second round of harvesting, you'll find you'll take you wait between 11 and 12 months. Oh, okay. Why? Because the plant is already established, the root system is already there, the yes. leaves are already there. Yes. So once the sucker comes from underneath, it is just feeding on this. So it's ready to move and it will grow so fast. Oh, so that in one year, yes. again, you find yourself picking another round of what? Of fruit. Yes. As you continue looking after the garden, you continue adding the manure and feeding it, mm. it will give you up to the third round. Oh, yeah. So imagine harvesting 15,000 pineapples and after one year, you gain harvest 15,000 pineapples up to three times. And remember, uh, these are pineapples that are not going to ripen at a go. Mm. That's the beauty of a pineapple garden. Yes. One acre, you'll find that it is ripening in phases. For instance, you can see we are harvesting these. Yeah. Uh, this one we harvested some time back. You see now these slips oh, are quite brown. Like three of them. Yes, these are actually, four. Four. They are four, four. actually. Yes, wow. these ones, <laughs> they are more or less ready so to, when, to pick. So when was this harvested? Uh, this one maybe was around May. May, oh, okay. You, when we removed this one. Wow. You know, those are some of those early. Because as you plant some of these slips, mm. there are those that are well grown, yeah, well developed, others are a little bit. So you find that when you plant, yeah. your pineapple will grow in phases. So imagine, we have this, we have visited that one, mm -hmm. but we can say we are really in earnest starting with these pineapples. Yes. So remember, there are those ones which are at this level, mm -hmm. these ones which are flowering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we have these ones which are yet to flower. Yeah. So as you keep on selling these ones, by the time you exhaust all these ripe ones, mm -hmm. you will not realize it that this one is already almost uh, time to ripen. Yeah. Then you start harvesting. Before you realize harvesting that round and finishing that cycle, these ones will have flowered. Yeah. So you'll keep on harvesting from a particular garden even up to six months. Mm. And that is weekly income and that is very, very good yeah. for a farmer, especially in the region where people are used to planting, say, maize or, 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 or soya bean. Yeah. And you find during harvesting time, a truck comes and moves in the region, mm. in the villages buying. But because people are in need of finances because of school fees and so forth, they find themselves selling. Yeah. In one month, you find the whole village doesn't have food. The money has been spent, which can be turned around by growing pineapple. Because yeah. pineapple, you keep on selling in phases. Mm. You see, it keeps on. And remember, by the time you finish the other one, because now we are getting this, before we finish... Uh, a month or so, yeah. we are harvesting the other one, uh, there will be this one. Yeah. By the time you finish this one, this one will have brought another sack underneath. Yeah. Before you fin you know, realize it's already flowering. Yeah. So you'll keep on having money for a long period of a minimum of three years. You see? And it's a very good crop that can be a game changer. Yes. And that's yeah. why I'm encouraging people to really look at this crop, provided you can get quality seedlings, which are, we are able to what? Yeah. Uh, to provide. Yes. Yes, please. Someone may be asking, you've talked of suckers, that what is a sucker? Mm. Yeah. Okay. A sucker, um, I'm going to tell people there are three types. Uh, when you're growing pineapples, pineapples are grown vegetatively, meaning you get a part of a pineapple is what you plant to get another pineapple. Yeah. And that one we do using suckers. Yeah. Now for suckers, we have three types. Uh, or, 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 or vegetative growth on a pineapple. Mm. We have the crown, this very one. Okay. This one can act. This whole thing. Yes. Oh, okay. This whole this thing. This is called the crown. Yes. Yeah. When you pluck it off like this, you can break it off. Uh -huh. You can actually plant this oh. and get a pineapple. Okay. But this one will take you two years oh. well, from the point you put it. Oh, yeah. 24 months. Yes. For you to pick a fruit. Uh -huh. Then we have the slips. Yeah. These ones. Like this. Yes. Okay. Those ones take uh, 20 months. Uh, to be able to harvest. Yeah, yeah. If they are well developed, 18 months. Oh. Then we have what they call the sucker. Yeah. The sucker is when I told you that once you remove this fruit, mm. there is a, 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 the other suckers that grow from underneath yeah. that you, if you're doing thinning, yeah. if you find that your garden is healthy enough and you don't have to thin, you don't have to touch. Mm. Those ones take 18 months. Yeah. But when you go to a pineapple garden and people are selling you 
seedlings of pineapples or suckers they are always referring to the slips uh, those are the ones that are growing immediately underneath the pineapple yeah. and that is what you plant and can be able to give you fruit wow yes so you know what you're doing is actually quite amazing and you you went ahead up to a very far distance i think over 400 kilometers exactly <laughs> To bring these pineapple seedlings here. Yes, yes. And now the people from northern Uganda can just come and get it here, yes. even cheaply. Yes. So I know you are able to supply pineapple seedlings. You're able to people to do consultation. Mm. And people can learn from you. Yes. So how much someone who may be asking who wants to venture into pineapple farming, mm. how much is a seedling for okay. pineapple? Exactly. Thank you so much. Uh, here... We are selling um, a seedling at 200 shillings. Oh, only? Yes, because <laughs> uh, actually I was in Google at some point yeah. around, around the market and yeah. I saw somebody trying to, I don't know where he sourced them from, mm. and was trying to sell a seedling at 500. Oh. And I was saying, this is very unfair. Even if you have the crop, uh -huh. it's, if you are in to support the community, don't yeah. make it very expensive. Exactly. You see, yeah. make it affordable to the point that they can be able to. Of course, even if you're going to plant something, if you don't have money, mm. even if it's a, a rice garden, yeah. it will be expensive for you. Sure. So, but for pineapples, we are selling a seedling at what? At uh, 200 shillings. But to plant an acre, you'll need 15,000 yeah. seedlings. So, which translates to 3 million watt mm -hmm. shillings to be able to plant. That's for one acre. Uh, that is for one acre. So, yeah. depending on the volume uh, or number of acres that mm -hmm. you'd want to plant, mm -hmm. uh, we can be able to. Uh, provide you the seedlings. As I told you, I have another colleague I work with who is based in Masaka, yeah. where I sourced these ones. Because when we are giving out seedlings, we want to make sure that 15 uh, months down the road, yeah. you are going to be smiling and remembering mm -hmm. what we did for you. Yeah, yeah. It's not good to just pick a seedling from wherever you're picking it from. Yeah. You'll either end up with a sour pineapple. There are also pineapples, once it fruits like this, mm. is not able to propagate and give you uh, more slips to be able to harvest the oh, second and third round. Okay, okay. You harvest once mm -hmm. and the garden is done. Mm -hmm. So there are different types of pineapples and how you look after them that will determine how you can be able to get the crop. Yeah. So this uh, type of pineapple we, may, we went at length to make sure that we avail it here. We want when it can be able to change you know, uh, the narrative in the north where not necessarily that a, it's a humble community, a humble person, a humble household can sell off maize and in one month, the person is struggling again to survive. If they can be able to access these seedlings, uh -huh. even if you don't can't afford it uh, as an individual, yeah. you, you uh, team up and say we are three or four, yeah. and we want to buy an acre. Yeah. Or if you are a, a, a farmer group or a VSLA uh -huh. of a saving group of some nature, yeah. you can collect money together and first start by growing gardens as a group. Uh -huh. Remember, as I told you, once you harvest this crop, the slips that will come from out there will give you a minimum of four gardens, new gardens of pineapples, yes. you see? Yes. And that's just the first round of harvest. So so the beauty about it is, if I come right now to Lad Mix Farm, then I buy uh, one, uh, like 15,000 seedlings, mm. I may not be able to come back again because I, I, will, I will already, you know? Exactly. That's what I want people <laughs> to understand. When you buy your 15,000 seedlings and say you've bought an acre or two or three, depending yeah. on how fast you want to uh, mm -hmm. capture the market in the northern region, yeah. you'll buy the seedlings once and for all. From that point onwards, yeah. you are going to be a major supplier of seedlings exactly. to the nucleus community exactly. around you. Yeah. And you can be able to mint money. Mm. Because, for instance, I told you, yeah. if you have taken an acre and a minimum, remember after the first round of harvest, mm. it will give you four acres. Yes. If you want to just plant an additional one and remain with the mother garden, one acre plus another one, mm. meaning you have seedlings for three acres yeah. that is available yeah. for selling. And that is only the first round of harvest. Uh -huh. After one year, when you're doing another round of harvest, there will be seedlings worth another four acres. That one you can also sell yeah. up to the third round. Mm. And remember, by the time you are picking the third round of harvest in that mother garden, now the seedlings you planted after the first yeah. harvest, at that point they are also beginning to mature. And so you find yourself in a cycle of harvesting, you know, Mm. They say money grows on leaves. This is literally what I'm trying to tell people. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Wow. You know, I'll, I'll try to branch a little bit. Mm. You know, uh, 
I know they say farming is the backbone of Africa. Unfortunately, we translate this in a very negative way. Mm. Um, uh, a lot of young people, just like me, mm. have a very wrong idea about farming. Yet, in reality, farming, if you're serious about farming, mm. and you don't need to put a lot, it can change your life. As Arthur, mm. and you've been a farmer, right now you're a full-time farmer. Mm. Do you believe farming is the solution to the young people of Africa? Uh, I can tell people that farming is going to be the solution, is actually the solution. Mm. First of all, we have um, the, 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 the advantage of the, of the land. The land is available. Yes. Uh, you can yes, you can either have it, you can buy, you can you rent, can hire, you, know, you can yeah. rent, you can hire, you can lease. Yes, the land at least you will not say that there is nowhere you can lease land. It's yeah, a lot. there's land everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> so I encourage people to lease land uh -huh. or rent, or for those that have land yeah. to utilize it. Yes. You see, for me, uh, when I was in active employment, mm. it so happened that uh, it was due to COVID nineteen. Uh, it was uh, a problem globally, yeah, and it sure. affected financial resources for most NGOs. Yes. And mine was not the exception. Oh. So um, I felt that uh, there was no opportunity, and my contract came to a close. Mm. And I knew that looking for an opportunity will take another six months, then you're into the probationary period and so forth. Yeah. And yet I was already having this Maybe ad. the money you had yes. saved, you'll be using it again. Exactly. Yeah. So now... I saw that I had some, you know, small land. I said, why not go into farming? Mm -hmm. Secondly, I can guarantee that if you're out there and you're employed, you're not going to get rich uh, through getting a salary. You are supposed to think outside the box, start off a venture mm -hmm. that can give you, whether you want to go into animal production or crop production, yeah. and then farm. You'll be able to make quick money and sooner than later. I think that's one of the reasons why I opted to go into full-time farming. Yeah. I'm not at the age of saying that, I'm at the retirement, you know, mm, bracket. Yeah. <laughs> but I decided to see that, yes, I was getting, my salary was not bad, mm. but looking at what I wanted to achieve in a certain period of time, I had to make a hard decision and say, let me go into what? Into full-time farming. Yeah. And going into full-time farming, I wanted to go for those crops, eh, unique crops that mm. can give us return, not farming for the sake of farming. Yeah. I would have come and, and put uh, maybe rice or maize and so forth. Yeah. They are also very good. By the way, rice is a very good crop, yeah. uh, but normally it performs well if you have volumes, let's say sure. number of acres. Yeah, Even yeah. maize, if you uh, plant and do add value to it and sorghum and so forth. Yes. But for me, my desire is always to go for these crops whereby if you plant and harvest, mm. the garden does not die off after your first harvest. Yeah. You are able to do the second, third, fourth oh, harvest yes, and yes. propagate. Uh -huh. I also wanted a crop that is not going to be affected by the climate, mm. uh, climate change where there is prolonged sunshine or prolonged rain, yes. and they say, no, it is waterlogged, now it's not going to work well. Mm. That's why you find I came up with this crop in the northern part of Uganda. Yeah. And it's going to be a game changer for somebody out there, even if you're a graduate and you think it's going to be a challenge for you to look for, for, for what? Uh, for a job? Yes. Just take a bold step, come buy a seedlings for one acre, you will not turn back. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, you have your 15,000 fruits. Even if we say we are going to make it uh, to the uh, basic minimum yes. of selling a pineapple, whether it is this size or this size, you are going to sell it 1,000. Uh -huh. With 15,000 suckers, you are going to make yourself at least 15 million shillings. Yes. From what? Yes. From an acre. And remember, this is just the first round. Mm -hmm. After one year, you go again through another round of harvest. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Now, if you have this one acre, and you're getting that money. You can use that money to diversify and say maybe you want to do poultry. Yeah. Or you want to do, uh, maybe you want to go into avocado production or you want to do goat farming. Yeah. The 15 million or 12 or 10 can help you to kickstart. Remember, you are seated at home. What is important with this crop? Please grow it where your eyes can see. Oh, because we okay. have... We have human pests that yeah, also enjoy true. this crop. <laughs> if you put it very far and you think that you're going to harvest, it's just attractive to a young yes, child. Yes. If it's grazing out there, he'll pick it and eat. <laughs> so if you're somewhere, even if it is far, yes. just set your your, uh, your grass thatched uh -huh. house. Very good, very cool. Yeah. Stay there. If you can face off that block, be there. Yes. Once you're there, people are not going to really. And also, it will be important to, if you are, because now you become like the satellite farmer in that locality. Exactly. Motivate people to what? To grow this crop. Yes. If you can be able to sell them chips, uh, these seedlings, uh -huh. let them have it. Eventually, because for me, I know that 
For instance, if Charles, you take this mm. and you base maybe in, in Lamo mm. and you plant it and say I've done two acres. Yeah. In, in three years' time, I'm sure there will be like five more people whom you have provided seedlings on top of you expanding. Sure. So you find Lamo uh, began begins to what expand pineapple production. Mm. Another one is in Agago. Another one is in Nwea. Yeah. Before you know it, in five years we shall be the whole northern Uganda a hub of what of food but, production. Yes. Yes. Because I have seen. Kenyans traveling all the way from Kenya, they come. We have a lady who has planted 1,200 acres of mangoes, uh, Delight Farm here. Mm. And Is it near here? Yes, it's in Lumulu sub county. Oh, oh, wow. So you find, because of the volume, she wants to set up a factory which is not yet ready. Mm. But Kenyans are driving box bodies, whole trucks, fusos. Yeah, yeah. From there, coming all the way to buy mangoes. Yes. You yes, see? Yes. But why are they coming? It's because. The farm is able to provide the volume. Okay. He will pack once yeah. and fill the whole truck. Yeah. That's what makes sense uh, uh, with the particular work. Okay. You, you are able to provide the whole truck, mm-hmm. but you are also providing quality. Yeah, true. And then somebody will be able to do what? Uh, to, uh, you know, get income from this. Yeah. So I'm encouraging people that it's not a challenge when you say that if everybody grows pineapples, that is the trick. You go in the mm-hmm. central, when you go to areas that grow pineapples, yeah. you find people with 200 acres, 100 acres. Oh. You find when you have 2-3 acres in such community, you don't even talk. <laughs> yeah, people have 50, 100, 200, 500 acres yes, of pineapples. Yes. And they are doing it. And sub-county, sub-county and district and district. So the volumes are very important. Mm. Uh, recently, uh, we've seen some um, uh, investors from the Middle East coming and they're setting up uh, fruit processing factories yes. in those sub-regions. Oh. So even here, I am sure once you have the volume, yeah. the sky is the limit. Yeah, if you sure. go to town, you'll find so many people with these uh, juicers, yeah, these the ju- juice, juice points. Yeah. Yes, there yeah. have become so many. What yeah, do you think? They're going to need this food. Exactly. Because as we speak exactly. now, there is no mango. There is nowhere you'll get a mango. Sure. Which sure. I would do, uh-huh. and you have a, 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 a mix of, uh, how they call it, a mix of uh, maybe pineapple and, and mango, uh-huh. or pineapple and uh, or mango and the uh, av- avocado and melon. Yeah. But the pineapple, I'm telling you, yeah. this one when you start harvesting, uh-huh. you're going to keep on harvesting for six months, meaning this juicer is sure of yes. getting this crop from you. Exactly. There's no any other crop that yeah. you're going to harvest like this. Mangoes, you start harvesting in one month, it gets depleted from mm, the tree. Yeah, start true. flowering. True. But as I told you, this one. You know, you get it in phases. Mm. So you are not even going to be worried about the market, about who's going to consume it. Even you yourself, as you consume it, you know, <laughs> you'll find yourself uh, promoting the crop in the yeah, region. Yeah, sure. Mm. Wow, th- this is this is real amazing. Mm. And um, it's I'm just impressed, actually. It's, it's okay. quite amazing what is happening right here. Yes. And, you know, I'm, I'm holding this. It's, it's ready, by the way. <laughs> and it's smelling so nice. Yes. <laughs> smelling so nice. Mm. And um, it's, it's just so awesome. Mm. And uh, if you are in northern Uganda, you're watching this. We do have land here. And you can, you, like some of us, we are born and, you know, we inherited the land from our grandfathers, our parents, and we are not using it. Yes. I think we really have to change our mindset and how we think about farming. Mm. Not we should be not doing maybe only maize all the time, soya beans, granite, which, you know, when the season comes, people sell it. Yes. And unfortunately, you see, this thing, when, when the buyers come, they actually buy it very cheaply. Yes. When it's many. Mm. That's the unfortunate bit of it. Mm. And pineapple, th- this is amazing. And to any young person who is watching this right now, I think it's the right time for us, the young people, to venture into this. We have people like Arthur mm. who are able to give us even free knowledge, actually. Mm. And it's always available. So this is, this is amazing. Mm. And actually, they should also know about my YouTube channel oh, so yes. that they can be able to... Yes, and uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the link to his channel. To mm. the, you know, it's called Lad Mix Farm. Mm. You can go there and learn everything about pineapple, about God's farming, chili, purple. He's doing quite a lot. Mm. And he's, he's an experienced farmer, so I'm going to, to do that. Mm. If we are to conclude this one, mm. to anyone who is watching this video right now, who is interested in doing pineapple farming, mm. or who is interested in venturing into farming, yes. 
what would be your advice to them or what they need to know okay uh thank you so much uh, just to make everybody or listeners out there understand is that yeah. this particular crop does not have a season per se. Mm. Whether it is a rainy season, you can plant it. Whether it's a dry season, you can plant it. So, in Buganda, as I told you, they plant it mainly during the dry season. Mm. Because they want to leave the onset of the rainy season to come back to this particular garden yeah. and do intercrop with these seasonal crops like maize and beans which rely on the rainfall. As I told you, when it takes a month and a half and you have not planted maize or beans, that's when you find people telling you, ah, you're too late, you can't plant. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can say with this one. Oh, For okay. it, it is there. And as I told you, in the first season, you can put in a crop, either watermelon or tomatoes. Yeah. Once you remove, the second season, you can sell me put in beans. Mm -hmm. So that means, even if you are looking at the pineapple taking long, just know that you have harvested the first season you have gotten your maize, the yeah. second season you have gotten your beans. The yeah. third season, just add soil on it and let it be a garden like this. Because at that point it is trying to grow very big and trying to expand and you know, and you want it to absorb properly from the ground and be able to give you a good crop. Mm. Remember the returns that are going to come from here are way, way much uh, better than what you have gotten from the maize or that you can get in a particular acre of maize or beans. Yeah. And so you want this crop to also uh, pick up very well and remember it is a crop that is going to give you for multiple years say three years yeah, yeah. yes please wow mm. that, that's amazing and uh, i think we can end this one right here okay but it has been nice having a chat with you about this yes please. thank you for watching uh this is the ugandan farmer stories about Uganda and doing great thing in agriculture farming mm. and of course i am charles layo I'll see you in our very next video. Thank you.